So we're back with the fireside uh, talks. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Fembeck uh, from the Zero Project, and I'm welcoming now uh, Jose Vieira from the um, from the IDA, and uh, especially from the uh, in his role and in his capacity as uh, as the co-organizer um, of the Global Disability Summit, which uh, happened last year uh, in Norway. So uh, welcome, Jose. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me. Such a pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's a great pleasure and honor to have you here, especially I think it was really busy uh, these this, uh, this, uh, weeks and months for you, so really glad that you could uh, make it for the Fireside Talks here. So, Jose, uh, our conversation will, will focus on the on the Global Disability Summit, on the experience and, uh, and the way ahead. So, <coughs> what, what are your takeaways? Um, how did it go? What... Uh, where, where, what were your learnings? Uh, what were, were the main messages? How would you summarize the, uh, the this great event last week? Thank you. <clears throat> so let me first thank uh, the the Zero Conference for giving us the, this this opportunity because actually this is the first post GDS uh, public event that we are uh, having around the GDS. So for us, it's, it's such a great opportunity to be speaking to um to 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 this audience, but even more important to kind of start analyzing what the GDS 2022 has left and, and what is the, the, the future of the Global Disability Summit. It, I would like to, you know, at least highlight a few elements which I believe have been critically important for the GDS 2022. And the first one is we tried with, to, to build upon the 2018 GDS. So, the GDS 2022 is clearly a result of a, of a long journey that we started um, in 2018. And that's actually, I believe, a good element to, to show that this is not like events that happen every certain number of years, but it's actually like a permanent moving, um, evolving exercise that we're trying to do. The second element is the participation of persons with disabilities and the representative organizations. Of course, for those who attended the GDS last week, um, you have probably seen a lot of the discussions were around inclusive development, international cooperation. Of course, everything with from an angle of persons with disabilities and the disability rights agenda. But in general, the Global Disability Summit, we try to make it as, as, as much as we can a development conference where development actors, governments come together and try to see what they can do. But the participation of persons with disabilities and the representative organizations for this GDS has been a, a key component from defining the themes to a, having national consultations around how OPDs wanted to participate and actually to the a number of commitments they made by organization of persons with disabilities and civil society organizations. So I think the participation is one other big element. The next one is the number of commitments. We reached around 1,500, 1,500 commitments from approximately 180 stakeholders, including governments, UN agencies, uh, institutional financial institutions, um, civil society organizations, and OPD. And, 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 and the, the last but not least, a component which I believe is, is important is that we not only had a GDS, the main summit, but also a great number of events, concurrent events taking place. So we had almost a hundred side events. We have six regional satellite summits, sorry, five regional satellite summits. We have three pre-summit events. And I think when you look at this as a package, you realize the importance of the GDS, but also the interest that we managed to create among stakeholders to participate in the GDS 2022. And we hope that that gets reflected in future GDS. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> let me ask you a, a little more background on these commitments. This is, of course, uh, the heart or the backbone of the GDS, these commitments that uh, uh, <clears throat> members of all different sectors of society are, are, are giving, including also the Zero Project, of course. Um, are there some main takeaways, Some something that you point out? Are you seeing really progress uh, Com uh, compared to the commitments of, of 2018, how, how are these commitments developing? Um, yes, yes. As, as you rightly mentioned, um, 
along with the event itself, the other big pillar of the GDS uh, is is the, the the collection of commitment. And actually, uh, the collection of commitment is not just receiving commitments, but actually, what are we going to do with it? What how are we going to implement the commitments? So interestingly, um, for the GDS 2022, we um, we allowed new commitments as well as updated commitments from 2018. And that was that was a, I would say a risky a risky decision because when we decided to to do that we were thinking well maybe a lot of the stakeholders because of the pandemic because of the context that they have been um, um, working in would prefer to uh, play safe and and maybe update existing commitments and not um, to pledge new commitments but a there is almost like 97% of the 1,500 commitments for GDS 2022, which are new, and very little, 3.5%, 3, 3 that are updated commitments from 2018. So I think that that's one of the most important things. The second um, element is that one of the themes for the GDS 2022 was OPD participation, meaningful engagement of persons with disabilities. And when you look at the uh, 1,500 commitments, a lot of them are direct or indirectly connected to OPD participation and meaningful engagement of persons with disability. Again, I think this speaks to the realization of the concept that uh, we try to, to advocate for all the time, and that is organization of persons with disabilities can and should be key partners for inclusive development. The, the, the other element is that, um, of course, it was impossible not to include a very strong focus on health and access to healthcare systems and connect that with the COVID-19 pandemic for this GDS 2022. And again, that was another risky move because we wanted to include health, but we also wanted to make sure that when we address the issue of health, we do it from a human rights perspective. And when you look at the 1,500 commitments, most of the most of a lot of the commitments are again direct or indirectly connected to health, and in in that context, um, all of them a uh, privileged the perspective of human rights, um, the, the human rights perspective. So I think that's another another important element. And if I can if I can close um, with with one more uh, detail. We have seen out of the 1,500 commitments a, a good number of commitments that have financial um, commitments. So there are uh, stakeholders that are coming forward and saying we will commit X amount of, uh, of, of money towards the implementation of this program. We have seen commitments going into regions that were may not um, that 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 important in the past or that were not focused uh, in the past the good example of that is the Latin American uh, region so I think of course a lot of the commitments are focused on Africa but we do have almost 54 percent of commitments also focusing on in, in other areas of the world <coughs> thank you Jose that this was really uh, interesting enlightening this uh Focus and this uh, this uh, uh, <coughs> areas like health or Africa to, to point this out for us. Um, next, uh, and maybe also the, the closing question already. So, what, what what's next? Uh, where is the the Global Disability Summit uh, developing? What are the next events and uh, uh, and and challenges? <coughs> Thank you. So, uh, speaking about this this idea of making the GDS a permanent evolving um, a concept. In the closing of the GDS last week, we, 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 got the, we received the announcement of Germany and Jordan to be the next co-host. There are other countries that have already expressed interest of hosting a future GDS. But even more important, uh, we really want to have as many uh, opportunities as possible between summits where we can discuss follow-up uh, on the commitments, implementation of the commitments, participation of persons with disabilities and their representative organizations. So just in 2022, this year, we have planned a series of different events. Um, some of them are more 
thematic, some others are more uh, based on different regions. And, and actually the opportunity that the Zero Conference has given us to speak a, a little bit about the GDS actually is a good example of how we wanna uh, address the, the, the time between uh, the GDS. So we have a good plan of uh, promoting participation of persons with disabilities, implementing commitment, following up um, in the commitment, and of course, starting as soon as possible to prepare for the next Global Disability Summit. And I think uh, in, in this regard, organizations uh, that I'm, I'm sure are present here, civil society organizations, OPD, donors, multilateral organizations, et cetera, et cetera, have, as they have been uh, doing, have a key role to play. So this is an invitation to continue being in touch with the GDS Secretariat, with IDA, in thinking how better we can implement the GDS commitments. Mm. Uh, yeah, thank you for giving us this uh, this forecast. Is there um, a year already envisaged? Is it in two years or again only in four years? Uh, anything that you can say about that already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the definitely, the, the GD, the next GDS will take place in twenty twenty five. We have already plans for twenty twenty two, and again uh, for the years to come, we expect to have more countries coming forward and and expressing their willingness to be the co host. But actually, uh, looking at the commitments and see how we all can contribute in the implementation of those commitments. Mm. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Jose. Um, um, we are already in the in, in, in closing this session, so uh, you can always, of course, count on us as the Zero Project and the Zero Project Conference uh, to work together with the with the with the GDS wherever you want us and uh, and uh, and need us to come in. We are we are happy uh, to be to be partner with the with the GDS. Um, and uh, yeah, congratulations that you pulled this off as a conference organizer. Organizer myself, I know how difficult this was in this uh, in this past month. So, congratulations to you. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, let's let's continue uh, the conversation. And yeah, hope that uh, in this uh, in these uh, events that you forecast, we we stay in touch and uh, develop also something together. Thank you very much, Jose. And this closes this uh, fireside talk. Thank you. Thank you.